So what I might do, I might buy one of them pro shatsu massages you get in QVC. Get one of them, and just because I think if I put that under the ligament or some heat treatment, that that sort it out. <coughs> or a big stretch bandage. Um, I'll tell you what I will do, though. I've got to show you this program. Here we go. It's a TV program that I made. I won't tell you anything about it. You tell me, what subject do you think this man is discussing? Well, I'd been doing it with humans for quite a long time, or thought I had, and then suddenly I found that I didn't get as much resistance from animals, and I used to sort of sit and an animal would come up to me and I'd think, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Is the jacket a clue? And how often should you keep trying that? Try one thing until you're successful with that and then build up to another, maybe one a week. <laughs> Stuffed penguin, a clue at all? Or, or dozens of cats putting balls on their noses or something. What would you say to people who's, who may watch this show, not particular animal lovers, say it's all a load of rubbish, doesn't know what it's on about, what would you say to that? Well, they might be right, but I'd look at your pets if I were you. I'd look very closely at them and I'd see how they respond to you, and particularly how they respond to other people too. Mmm, because they might be having an affair. <laughs> now, what is this about? In fact, it's not at all about uh, what you're thinking. This man is, would you believe, a pet psychic. This man can delve into your, it's called psychic pets, right? And the one thing I love about this program, A, it's, it cares about animals, and yet this woman has killed a zebra to make her pants, right? <laughs> uh, but one thing I loved about it more than anything, the thing I was proudest of, was the, the opening titles, right? Which I did. I did these opening titles when I was ill, right? I had a very, very bad case of food poisoning, and yet I still managed to drag myself into the studio and cut the opening titles. Unfortunately, I was suffering with flatulence. And, if, and just at the end, I couldn't hold back any longer, unfortunately. But I, I still think they're good. All right, I'm sorry. Sorry about it. Let's, let's do a little bit more of the show anyway. Right, on with the show. Let's go to the phone lines and hello to Doreen. Hello. Hello. Right, now you have a four-year-old cat called Bozzy, named after Bosnia, yes. who you found abandoned in a dustbin. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it was in a bit of a state, so you called it Bozzy after Bosnia. Uh, and you've got that other cat, of course, that you found very hungry, called Ethy. <laughs> Doreen, is he a Siamese cat? No, he's a Devon Blue Rex. A Devon Blue Rex? Ah, oh, they are fantastic. They are the tastiest cats in the world, right? No, all right, I know some people don't agree with eating cats, but if you go to certain parts of... <laughs> no, you go to certain parts of the East, and there's standard bill of fare on any menu. And those Devon Blue Rexes are gorgeous. They've got a slightly tangy taste. And you have to have them with a, with a light wine, a light white Riesling or something like that, but they are brilliant. Right. I've never heard of that, that breed. Do you know anything about them? Uh, the only thing we know is that they're bred from a mutation and they're virtually hairless. <laughs> right. Do you know anything yes, about Yes, they're very sensitive. They often look quite bald. The mm -hmm. ears particularly look quite bald. Um, they're an acquired taste. Some... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're a little bit tangy. Love them. Uh, this is this is my favourite bit of the show, actually. Uh, just coming up out there, they're introducing uh, the guests in the studio. I don't think you should comment, basically, on, on you know people's physical attributes. Now our guest in the studio is Monster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what about her cat? That's all we really care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 